Vikings. Today, media is saturated with Viking references. You've got two shows on Netflix, Vikings and Last Kingdom. Even the games that are coming out depict the Norse world. For example, you have God of War 4 and Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So, what has made their culture and history so interesting? Today, we are going to delve into the vast Norse world to see what all that hype is about. Let's begin the video. Who were the Vikings? From around 800 AD to the 11th century, a vast number of Scandinavians left their homeland in search of better fortunes elsewhere. These seafaring warriors were collectively known as Vikings or Norsemen, Northmen. These fearsome warriors started raiding coastal sites, especially monasteries in the British Isles. Over the next three centuries, these raiders would leave their mark as pirates, raiders, traders, and settlers on much of Britain and the European continent. Their influence reached as far as East Russia, Iceland, Greenland, and Newfoundland. The word Viking is derived from the Scandinavian term vikingur, a word for pirates. Mostly, these Vikings came from areas we now call Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. These people were mostly seen as savages by other nations as they came from foreign lands and more importantly, they were not Christian and they showed no respect for Christian morals and ethics. Culture of the Vikings Today, whenever you hear the word Viking, a picture of a fair-headed brute with an axe comes to mind. But in truth, the war wasn't the only part of Viking culture. For the most part, Vikings were farmers. They grew crops like oats, barley, and wheat, with a number of vegetables taking root here and there. There was plenty of livestock available, and trades like boat builder, blacksmith, leather worker, fishers, and even merchants were not uncommon for the Vikings. The Vikings were particularly fond of wool and animal skin. Viking women were extremely skilled weavers and were able to make beautiful patterns from wool dyes with plants. One interesting element of their culture was that both men and women used to go to war or for raids. A concept that was highly controversial for the more conservative European states. At the heart of Viking culture lies the Viking longship. These extraordinary vessels shaped the entire civilization of the seafaring warriors and through them, the course of European history was set. The shipbuilding skills of the Vikings had been honed for more than 10 centuries. They had a variety of vessels, from small shipping boats to big cargo vessels to fast longships used for raiding. Most of the ships were designed to be narrow with short drafts, which made them extremely versatile for use in the open seas and inland English rivers. The real peak point was in the 7th century when the Viking shipbuilders were able to invent a keel. The keel is a structural beam that runs from bow to stern and increases stability and speed. This, along with sails and a mast, allow the Norsemen to finally make the journey across the North Atlantic to more golden coasts. The Vikings paid as much attention to their crafts as they did to art. The ships were adorned with carved dragon heads. The heads, along with the striped red sail, would become to known as a symbol of the Vikings. This combination struck fear, not at the heart of Europeans for nay three centuries. Vikings as traders. Although they are best remembered as fearsome warriors, the Vikings were also great traders. They traded as far east as Constantinople, modern-day Istanbul, the capital city of the Byzantine Empire, the eastern wing of the old Roman Empire. Some even made it further to Baghdad in Iraq, returning home with ships laden with silks, spices, and silver. In return, the Vikings sold items such as amber, fur, wool, and leather. They also sold slaves, known as thralls, in Old Norse. These were people whom the Vikings had captured during their raids, many of them monks and clergymen, since the Vikings often targeted monasteries and churches. I think that's enough of their culture. For now, we will move towards the start of the Viking era. Reasons for Raiding 
But before we get into all those raids, we need to identify the reasons which led to the increasing level of Viking raids. Technological advances in shipcraft made it possible for Vikings to reach far-off areas. The Vikings were not a wealthy lot, and the increase in trade with other European countries made them see the potential wealth in those lands which could have motivated them to plunder that wealth for themselves. Moreover, trading had led dot an influx of silver bullion into Scandinavia from the Islamic world, creating elites around which ambitious young men gathered. Leaders and to pay for these men for their military support and loyalty, and thus to sustain their wealth, these leaders ordered raids abroad. Some researchers have considered reduced agriculture output as the reason behind increased raids to search for better agricultural land. Finally, some researchers believe that the raids had begun in search of potential mates. The Viking setup was a polygamous one, which meant that there were lesser mates available for the young Vikings who had to compete with each other to win the heart of a lady. Thus, these young men soon started to venture out to plunder wealth and capture slaves and concubines. There is no one exact reason for the start of the raids, but they did start and changed the European world forever. The Viking Age In 793 AD, monks on the Lindisfarne Monastery saw a dragon ship on the horizon. The monastery was a well-known abbey of learning and was well known throughout the continent for its knowledgeable monks and a vast library. However, as the dragon ships reached shore, the Viking warriors descended on the monastery like a winter storm. They sacked the monastery and killed dozens of monks and took many captives. The monastery was stripped of all its riches and the library was razed to the ground. This attack shook the European religious world to its core. Two years later, Vikings again struck the undefended island monasteries of Skye and Iona in the Hebrides, as well as Rathlin, near Ireland. The first recorded raid in Europe was St. Philibert's Monastery on Noirmontier, near the estuary of the Loire River. These attacks were just the beginning of a three-century era in which Vikings would ravage and pillage throughout Europe. The Vikings restricted themselves to hit and run tactics for several decades following the initial assaults. Coastal targets in Ireland and Europe were the most common targets. But soon, taking advantage of the inner European conflicts, the Vikings started to move inwards. Following the death of Louis the Pious, Emperor of Francia in 840, his son Lothar invited a Viking army to help him in a power struggle with his brothers. Soon, the Vikings realized they could be paid to leave Francia alone, and the Frankish coast soon became a popular target of Viking activity. By the mid of the 9th century, Ireland, Scotland, and modern-day England had become major targets for Viking settlements as well as raids. They soon gained control of the Northern Isles of Scotland, the Hebrides, and much of mainland Scotland. They found the Irish trading towns, namely Dublin, Waterford, Wexford, Wicklow, and Limerick. These bases were then used to launch attacks further inland and across the Irish seas to England. In 842, Vikings ruthlessly attacked Nantes on the French coast, and because of their ability to maneuver upriver, they went on to raid towns as far inland as Paris, Limoges, Orleans, Tours, and Nimes. In 844, Vikings stormed Seville. In 859, they plundered Pisa, though an Arab fleet chases them back. In 911, the West Frankish king granted Rhône and surrounding territory to a Viking chief, Rollo. Rollo is rumored to be the brother of famous Viking warrior Ragnar Lothbrok. In exchange for land, Rollo denied passage to any other raider, and this region today is known as Normandy, or Land of the Northmen. However, soon King Charles the Bald began defending West Francia more purposefully by fortifying towns, abbeys, rivers, 
and coastal areas, so the Vikings began to concentrate more on England. In the wave of Viking attacks in England after 851, only one kingdom stood strong, Wessex. The modern counties of Hampshire, Dorset, Wiltshire, and Somerset stood where the only kingdom that was able to defend against the fierce assault of the Vikings. The Nordic armies conquered East Anglia and Northumberland and practically dismantled Mercia. In 871, King Alfred, the Great of Wessex, became the only king to defeat a Danish army decisively. Following the defeat, the Danes settled to the north in an area known as Danelaw. This area was given to the Vikings after an agreement was reached between Guthrum and King Alfred. The area came to be known as Danlegau, or where the Danish law prevails. After settling, many Danes became farmers and traders and established York as a leading merchant city. In the 10th century, descendants of Alfred began recapturing Scandinavian areas of England. The last Danish king, Eric Bloodaxe, was expelled and killed around 952, permanently uniting England into one kingdom. In the 9th century, the Vikings also moved towards Iceland, an island in the North Atlantic. They were the first people to settle there in large numbers. By the late 10th century, some Vikings moved further westward and settled in Greenland. Interestingly, these Viking settlers may have been the first people to discover North America. Leif Erikson led some Vikings on an expedition to the New World. They called their landing place Vinland and built a temporary settlement at Lens au Meadow in modern-day Newfoundland. However, there is little evidence of any permanent Viking settlement as they did not form anything permanent. Second Viking Age by the mid-19th century, Denmark had been Christianized and now was united under the kingship of Harald Bluetooth. The Second Viking Age had begun. Large-scale raids were carried out as Vikings hit the coast of Europe, especially England. In 991, Sven Forkbeard, Harald's rebellious son, led a Viking raid on England and the entire kingdom was conquered by 993. The then English King Ethelred was sent into exile. After Sven's death, his son Knut took over the Danish Empire. After Knut, two of his sons succeeded him, but they too died. Their death enabled Edward the Confess, son of a non-Danish king, return from exile and regain the English throne. He died without heirs, after which the most powerful noble Harold laid claim to the throne. His army drove off a Viking invasion led by the last great Viking king, Harald Hardrada. However, he too was defeated by William, Duke of Normandy, who crowned himself as King of England in 1066 and was able to defend his empire against any future Dane invasions. The events of 1066 brought an end to the Viking Age. By that time, most of the Scandinavian countries were Christian and Viking culture had been absorbed by the European Christian culture. Impact of the Vikings The legacy of the Vikings extends beyond the gruesome and bloody tales that are often associated with them. They are still, however, an integral part of the Viking legend. Many trading routes open due to the exploration of the Vikings. The ones who settled on the banks of the River Volga in modern-day Russia were called the Rus. These guys are the ones who gave Russia its name. They were the first ones to discover North America. Vikings were the ones who opened trading routes to Constantinople and the Byzantine Empire. Oh, a fun fact, the Vikings invented the comb. That might sound unbelievable to most of you guys, as the tales usually represent them as unkept barbarians who were always in bloodlust. But the actual facts are far from it. They bathed more frequently than most Europeans, and you can often find grooming objects near their burial sites. These guys were cleaner than your average European, and those people called the Viking savages. Ha! How the facts have been twisted. 
the Vikings have played an integral part in the history of Europe and the world at large. Their myths and legends still hold sway, and some of their gods have featured in modern mass media. The famous Thor is their thunder god, and his entire world is based on Norse mythology. Other than this, their influence led to the unification of England, and their expeditions connected the world more than it had ever been before. So that's all for today, guys. Hope you liked this video. Hit the subscribe button to see more of our videos directly on your feed. One last thing, hit the bell icon to receive an instant notification from our side. Goodbye, or as the Norse used to say, bless our.